Ah, for just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea. Tracing one warm line through a land so wide and savage and make a northwest passage to the sea. There's nobody I've ever met who, uh, who's had as much talent. Just pure, raw talent as Stan. Who, there's no one I know who could put words and music together as well. As Stan, there's no one who I know who had as much feeling for what he was doing as an artist as well as Stan. Westward from the Davis Strait is there twas said to lie the sea route to the Orient for which so many died, seeking gold and glory, leaving weathered, broken bones. And a long forgotten lonely cairn of stones. Ah, for just one time, I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea, tracing one warm line through a land so wide and savage and make a northwest passage to the sea. Anyone who has never heard of him before, who has never been exposed to his music once they hear it, just never forgets it. It just gets under their skin. They recognize it instantly as being something so uniquely Canadian and it's talking about them. And and it makes him very special to them. Three centuries thereafter, I take passage over land in the footsteps of brave Kelso, where his sea of flowers began, watching cities rise before me, then behind me sink again this tardiest explorer Driving hard across the plain Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage To find the hand of Franklin Reaching for the Beaufort Sea Tracing one warm line through a land so wide and savage and make a northwest passage to the sea. Hell, I would compare Rogers to Shakespeare. I mean, Shakespeare, you know, he put his pants on one leg at a time and, and, he, and, he, and he wrote in grand and passionate ways about everything and also falls flat at times. Um, now I'm feeling embarrassed, you know, but I think if there's any Canadian artist that, that we don't have to feel embarrassed about offering to the world, um, it's Stan Rogers. How then am I so different from the first men through this way? Like them, I left a settled life, I threw it all away to seek a northwest passage at the call of many men and find there but the road back home again. Ah, for just one time I would take the Northwest Passage to find the hand of Franklin reaching for the Beaufort Sea, tracing one warm line through a land so wide and savage, and make a northwest passage to the sea. We 
just lost sight of the Queen's Port Light Down the day before us And the wind has blown some cold today With just a wee touch of snow Along the shore from Lazy Head Hard a beam half island Tonight we let the anchor go Down in Fogarty's Cove My sounds like the raven's wing Her hair's like her mother's With hands that make quick work of a chore Her eyes like top of her stove Come supper time she'll walk the beach Wrapped in my old duffel With her eyes upon the masthead reach Down in Fogarty's Cove she will walk the sandy shore so plain, watch the covers roaming, till it come to wild rose chance again down in Fogarty's Cove. She'll walk the sandy shore so plain, watch the covers roaming, till it come to wild rose chance again down in Fogarty's Cove. When I'm away to sea, nights me when I'm with her. She'd rather write a government job or maybe go on the road. But I love the way that I put about and nose into the channel. My Sally keeps a supper and a bed for me down in Fogarty's Cove. She will walk the sandy shore so plain, watch the combers rolling till I come to Wild Rose Chance again down in Fogarty's Cove. She'll walk the sandy shore so plain, watch the combers rolling till I come to Wild Rose Chance again down in Fogarty's Cove. He means very much to me because he lived in Halfway Cove, not far from my home, and I really enjoyed his singing. Well, he was, everybody loved his music down around here. Did they? Yeah. Yeah. He is, he was quite a fella. He always used to come down here for his fish and have a beer with us and one thing or another. One's kind of a man. Ball hit the footer. He was kind of ball hit it, but he was a good bunch of brains. I have a few of his albums at home. What do you think? I, I like him. Of course, traditional music, you know, suited the area a lot. Of it. what? Say it suited our area, his music did. Stan Rogers walked in the door. You were talking to him for a few minutes, and you said, Stan, how about coming to my house for supper tonight? And if he said yes, I'll come to your house for supper. And about the same instant, Brian Mulrooney walked up to you or walked up to Stan and says, Stan, I want you to have supper with me tonight. I mean, Brian Mulroney is the Prime Minister of Canada, and there's no doubt with the pr prestige and everything involved, he might go to Brian Mulroney's house for supper. But I guarantee you he'd be at your house before the night was over. He'd, he'd come back. He was just that type of man. He'd, he had a love for the common, everyday person, and, and he felt more comfortable, I would say, at your house than he would at Brian Mulroney's. My mother was born about, and brought up about 16 miles down the road there in Canso. All my life, you know, I've, I've been coming here, and uh, when I wasn't here, I was hearing stories about it, you know. My grandmother still lives up there, and my, my Aunt June and Uncle Sam. And uh, any little, anything that happens and, uh, here, you know, back there I am sitting back there in Ontario. But when I hear that, it affects me, you know. Uh, when I hear about some fellow who's lost a boat or... Uh, you know, somebody who drowned or, uh, you know, some ship polluting the coast or something. I mean, that, that affects me very deeply because I feel more at home here than I do in Ontario. You know, I, even though I was raised in Ontario and, and, and born there, you know, my, my family ties, my cultural roots, everything is tied up with, with this Chetabakta shore. How still lies the bay in the light western airs which blow from the crimson horizon Once more we tack home With a dry empty hole Saving gas with the breezes so fair She's a kindly Cape Islander old But still sound But so lost in the long liner's shadow Make and break and make do, but the fish are so few that she won't be replaced. 
should she founder Now it's so hard to not think of before the big war when the cod went so cheap but so plenty Foreign trawlers go by now with long seeing eyes taking all where we seldom take any And the young folk don't stay with the fishermen's ways Long ago they all moved to the city And the ones left behind old and tired and blind can't work for a pound for a penny In make and break harbor the boats are so few too many are pulled up and rotten Most towns stand empty Old nets hung to dry Are blown away, lost and forgotten Now I can see the big draggers Have stirred up the bay Leaving lobster traps smashed on the bottom Can they think it don't pay To respect the old ways That make and break men have not forgotten For we still keep our time To the turn of the tide And this boat that I built with my father Still lifts to the sky The one longer and I Still talk like old friends on the water In make and break harbor The boats are so few Too many are pulled up and rotten Most towns stand empty Old nets hung to dry Are blown away, lost and forgotten When he was in Little Dover for a concert, it was an older fisherman who came up to him and said, you know, and the man had tears in his eyes, and he said, I've been fishing man and boy for over 70 years, and you say things in your music that I can hardly even dare to think. And Stan was just like, he didn't know which way to look. It was just all he could do to keep the lump down in his throat. But he said to have reached someone on that level and then have that person, that crusty human being who would find it difficult to talk about those feelings, come up to him and share it man to man with him <clears throat> was really significant to him. That, that really meant a lot. Well, Stan Rogers wasn't a fisherman, but when he wrote a song about fishing or fishermen, then he was a fisherman because he put his whole heart and soul into it. And the same way if he wrote a song about a farmer, Stan Rogers probably never plowed a field. When he wrote a song about a farmer, then he was a farmer because he just put so much into it and he made it a point to find out about it and know what the people were going through to how to live it. The West you know, the, the tours that we did out there were such intense experiences and, and we saw so many things that were absolutely foreign to us, uh, foreign to our experience and, and, and met so many people that uh, we just didn't know existed that it can't help but affect the way you see things and the way you, um, you know, the way you, you feel about yourself and your relationship to, to other things. So Stan, you know, would, would tell the story on stage about how um, 
the field behind the plow sort of uh, had its genesis from driving around four o'clock in the morning across the prairies and, and seeing a, a farmer out there plowing his field with his headlights on and wondering what the hell was he doing out there at that hour of the day. Uh, you know, because only truckers and folk singers were out on the road at that, that point of the day. Um, and I guess just reflecting on just how, must, how incredibly difficult it must be to, to, to have to work that kind of life and, and uh, you know, those kind of hours, for, and basically everything just depends on the weather. You know, you have this enormous vista of cloud and sunset and, and rainstorms off 20 miles away, and you can see this whole thing moving, and it's like watching the hand of God at work, you know. And, Watch the field behind the plow Turn to straight dark roads Feel the trickle in your clothes Blow the dust cake from your nose Hear the tractor's steady roar Oh, you can't stop now There's a quarter section more or less to go And it figures that the rain Keeps its own sweet time You can watch it come for miles But you guess you've got a while So ease the throttle of the air Every rod's a game And there's victory in every quarter mile Poor old Cousin down the road the hearty hail and hoppers brought him down. He gave it up and went to town. And Emma Pierce the other day took a heart attack and died at 42. You could see it coming on, cause he worked as hard as you. In an hour, maybe more, you'll be wet clear through. The air is cool now. Pull your hat brim further down and watch the field behind the plow. Turn to straight dark rooms. Put another season's promise in the ground. It's very hard for an artist to stand up on stage and say, please buy my album, because if I don't sell it, I can't make another one, and I have to pay my backer. And so he would stand up on stage, and he'd say, if you want to buy my album, write to my mother and order it and enter into a lifetime correspondence with her. And that is what practically what happened. People just kept writing. They wanted to know what the boys were doing, where they were going to be next, uh, what, when Stan was going to release a new album. And uh, it just went on and on and on. And then they would send pictures of their babies and birth announcements and, and things like that. <laughs> As the years went by and uh, we kept releasing albums, the fans felt that they were part of Stan's success. From the very beginning, I knew that the lock keeper was about the dichotomy that Stan had in his own life, being on the road, being home, um, the lure of the road, how wonderful it is out there, you know, the, the, the excitement of gigging, meeting different people, um, being Oh, adored on some levels, obviously uh, having a, a great deal of respect and and uh, and uh, engendering quite a bit of emotion with with his music. Um, it was important to be out there. He wanted less and less to be out there for long periods of of time. 
But Lockkeeper, Lockkeeper says it all. It's the, 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 the little rat on the, on the inland waterway talking to the, the seagoing rat. He took that uh, analogy from, from the wind in the willows. You say, well met again, lock keeper. We're laden even deeper than the time before. Oriental oils and tea brought down from Singapore. As we wait for my lock to cycle, I say my wife has just given me a son. A son, you cry, is that all that you've done? She wears bougainvillea blossoms, you pluck them from her hair and toss them in the tide. Sweep her in your arms and carry her inside. Her sighs catch on your shoulder Her moonlit eyes grow bold And wiser through her tears And I say, how could you stand To leave her for a year? Then come with me, you say To where the Southern Cross Rides high upon your shoulder Come with me, you cry Each day you tend this lock You're one day older While your blood grows colder But that anchor chain's a fetter And with it you are tethered to And I wouldn't trade your life for one hour of home. Ah, your anchor chain's a fetter, and with it you are tethered to the foam. And I wouldn't trade your whole life for one hour of home. Roger's music does is it brings you into contact with the real people of the country through his voice and his insights. He caught their concerns and he caught their inner voice, I'd say, although what, what he turned it into was high art, was beautiful language. It's a marvelous sort of combination because really you've got, I think, wonderful words, wonderful images and diction and, uh, and presence. Um, and yet, it's, it's, as, it's the heightened voice of the people. Canadians are like puppies. They like to be liked. Well, it's maybe time we uh, started growing up and started showing our teeth. Anybody who's listened to a maritime weather report where they're uh, where they warn about freezing spray, uh, these are the conditions when even the biggest, most modern trawler can become top heavy with ice, turn turtle, and disappear in an instant. It's a, it's a terribly hard living. Come on, you land, 
drawn near to me that I be not forsaken. This day was lost, the genie see, and my living has been taken. I'll go to see. Now it's well, you know what the fishing has been. It's been scarce and hard and cruel. But this day, by God, we sure caught, caught. And we sang and we laughed like fools. I'll go to see. No more. I'll never know what it was we struck, but strike we did like thunder. John Price, give a cry and pitched over. Now it's forever. He's gone under. I'll go to see no more. Now a leak we've sprung. Let there be no delay. If the genie see we're saving, John Price is around and slipped away So I'll catch the hole while you're bailing I'll go to see no more But no leak I found from bow to hold no rock it was that got her, but what I found made me heart stop cold. For every seam poured water, I'll go. My God, I cried as she went down. That boat was like no other. My father built her when I was nine and named her for my mother. I'll go. Those stories that he wrote of individuals persevering and triumphing um, in some ways to me are little microcosms of Canada in general. And then there was the historical aspect too. He researched, uh, he, he cared about what had happened, he valued the historical, he felt it was worth preserving, worth singing about, uh, which I think is important for any country's identity. I mean, I don't know if he would even have called himself a nationalist, but I saw that what he was doing was nationalist in a, in, in a positive way, not in that jingoistic, you know, sort of reflex waving of the flag, but in a sense of really caring who we are, where we come from, and, and you know, what we're becoming. After the first album, which is uh, almost entirely about the scene, about this area, um, I thought I'd get out of it, you know. I, I, I'd started out as a contemporary songwriter, you know. Uh, and but I found I couldn't I couldn't leave it alone. You know, once you get once you get hooked on a thing like this, you get the the sea in front of you all the time. You you can't leave it alone. 
Now, with Barrett's Privateers, for example, uh, I wrote that after hanging out for a weekend with the friends of Fiddler's Green, who did great shanties, you know? But they were all, you know, they all knew the songs, and they could sing the leads in them. Well, I wanted a shanty that I could sing the lead in, you know, instead of just hanging back and singing harmony on the chorus. I wanted to lead one, you know? So I had to write it. On the 96th day we sailed again. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. When a bloody great Yankee <laughs> hove in sight. With our cracked four founders we made to fight. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier. The last of Paris for Iva how I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. She was broad and fat and loose in stays, but to catch her took the antelope two whole days. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateers. And at length we stood two cables away. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Four pounders made an awful din, but with one fat ball, the Yanks drove us in. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's privateer. The antelope shook and pitched on her side. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. Barrett was smashed like a bowl of eggs, and the main truck carried off both. My legs. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. So I'm a broken man on the Halifax Bear, the last of Barrett's privateers. So here I lay in my 20, 30 year. How I wish I was in Sherbrooke now. It's been six years since we sailed away, and I just made Halifax yesterday. God damn them all. I was told we'd cruise the seas for American gold. We'd fire no guns, shed no tears. Now I'm a broken man on a Halifax pier, the last of Barrett's priorities. Stan took different traditions. I mean, definitely the, the British tradition. And I think obviously the maritime influences are, are there as well. And I think he made them into his own. I think he created a style. Maybe style is a better word than tradition. And, um, but his, his style is now becoming a tradition. He had so many followers, so many admirers, that the, the young people are, I think, looking at his music as if it's always been there. I've never been associated with an artist since or before then that started to garner the kind of following that he did just from word of mouth. It was comparable to, in the rock industry, Bruce Springsteen, that once people started talking about Bruce Springsteen, it wasn't just the time cover and all those things. People just knew about it from word of mouth that there's this great artist out there, and in the folk genre, and even outside of that, because I think it was expanding, that happened with Stan. People just talked about him. There was a buzz about him in the United States and Canada. Chicago, worst snowstorm they'd had in, in a decade. And there were people that drove two hours through this horrendous storm to see Stan Rogers. There were people that were skiing to the show, <laughs> cross-country skiing. That's how badly people wanted to see Stan, and they were never disappointed. I think that's the fear with Canadian artists is that, oh, you know, let's get another one over the wall so that it's not lost, so that it's not uh, pilfered away on some cassette tape somewhere, some, you know, that the music's not lost, that the, that the image, that the definition of who we are, which is what culture is, is not lost. And he was out and he had crested that wave so that even though he died, it's not lost. The songs are there, they're being sung everywhere. I mean, it's not a place I would, I travel to where people do not know Stan Rogers' tunes. It's with no major distribution, it's with no major airplay, and yet people in Scotland are singing Stan Rogers' tunes. People in, you know, Whitehorse are singing Stan, people in Texas, Kerrville, Texas know Stan Rogers' tunes. I go into Northwest Passage and they'll join in. The last year and a half of Stan's life, 
it, it was just like somebody speeded up the film. It was just like, you know, like, you know, we never could pause to catch our breath and we were, we were always on the plane somewhere or getting in the van somewhere or it was getting to be that kind of life and it was just, it was just speeding up so much. And Stan thrived on it. He he's in many ways very brash, but in other ways very insecure. And when someone came up and said, God, I loved what you did the other night, that was fantastic. You know, he just got this big glow on his face. In make and break harbor, the boats are so few. Too many are pulled up and dropped. Most houses stand empty, old nets hung to dry, are blown away, lost. And forgotten in make and break harbor, the boats are so few. It's it's amazing to me because they, you know, you always think, uh, oh, you know, Stan and these, you know, we can always hear ourselves. You know, I'll see him next week. I'm, you know, I'm at the, I think I'm doing Canada Day with him or something like that. And you know, we were starting to sing, and I. They, they were, uh, Stan was starting to do something. I thought, oh, I'm going to go out and check out the campfire. So I wandered around, and I, it was about four in the morning. I was sitting by this campfire, and Stan finally kind of made it over to our campfire. And I was sitting down. I have this clear image in my mind. of I was sitting down, and Stan kind of had walked in, and somebody had asked him to sing uh, 45 years from now. And so my image of him is by the campfire light in this incredible mesquite and him s standing there with his guitar singing, you know, 45 years. Of course, I had the best seat in the house, right? I'm sitting right there 45 years from now. And I, th I remember thinking, well, that's it. It's not going to get any better than that. Stan singing here and, this, you know, this is as good as it gets. I mean, he loved to sing. He, you know, four in the morning. He was probably there till, till the plane left singing and, and, and carrying on. And, that's my last crystalline image of, of Stan. But I want to see your smiling face 45 years from now. I just want to hold you closer than I've ever held anyone before. You say you've been twice a wife and you're through with life. Oh, but honey, what the hell's it for? After 23 years, you'd think I could find a way to let you know somehow. But I want to see your smiling face 45 years from now. Yes, I want to see your smiling face 45 years from now. I remember him telling me one evening out of June's. I think he had just finished singing the Genie C and he slapped me on the shoulder with that big paw of his and he held and he said, I'm saving up for one. So I wasn't sure what he meant. I said, saving up for what? He said, I'm saving up for a 40-footer Cape Island type boat. He said, I'm going to have it built in the boat shop in Dover. So, so he was really, really gung-ho about this. He really had his mind set on it. He said he was saving his money at the time. And I uh, dare say if he hadn't gotten killed, if he hadn't had the accident on the plane, I dare say he would have had a Cape Island boat. And I'd be willing to bet you my life it would have been named the Genie C. Rise again, rise again, that her name not be lost to the knowledge of men. Those who loved her best and were with her till the end will make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. Rise again, rise again, that her name not be lost to the knowledge of men. Those who loved her best and were with her till the end will make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. Try it with me, won't you? Rise again, louder. Rise again, that her name not be lost to the knowledge of men. Those who loved her best and were with her till I was on a ship that were carrying coal from Norfolk, Virginia, to a place near Fall River, Massachusetts. And we got caught in a very bad storm. It was an old ship. And uh, we didn't have very much warning. About 2 o'clock in the morning, we, we saw the ship was starting to get in trouble and go down by the head. And uh, we called the Coast Guard, and they, they were on the way out as quick as they could. And the ship cracked up and rolled over at 4.15 a.m. 
The water was very cold, it was 39 degrees. I had heard enough stories about a vortex and a whirlpool sucking people down when the ship sunk, so I started trying to swim away as fast as I could. So it was probably the best part of an hour that I'd been doing this, that I, I, I ran across a swamp lifeboat and I managed to get into it. As the night wore on and the seas kept smashing down on top of me and I finally got the feeling I just couldn't make it anymore. And I was just about ready to give up when all of a sudden I, the words came into my mind, rise again, rise again, no matter what you've lost, be it a home, a love, a friend, like the Mary Ellen Carter, rise again. And I just kept saying that over, and then the water cleared away, and I, I'd shout it out and sing it out. And another sea would come down on top of me. And I firmly believe that if it wasn't for that, that happening to me, I just was in a position where I couldn't have come through. And that song made the difference in me living through that night. There isn't any question in my mind whatsoever about it. She went down last October in a pouring, driving rain. The skipper he'd been drinking and the maid he felt no pain Too close to Three Mile Rock and she was dealt her mortal blow And the Mary Ellen Carter settled low There was just a spy aboard her when she finally was awash We'd worked like hell to save her, all heedless of the cost And the groan she gave as she went down it caused us to proclaim That the Mary Ellen Carter would rise again Rode her off, not a nickel would they spend. She gave twenty years of service, boys, and met her sorry end. But insurance paid the loss to us, so let her rest below. Then they laughed at us and said we had to go. We talked of her all winter, some days around the clock, for she's worth a quarter million afloat and at the dock. And when every jar that hit the bar, we swore we would remain and make the merry. Carter, rise again, here we go, rise again, rise again, that her name not be lost to the knowledge of men. Those who loved her best and were with her till the end will make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. All spring now we've been with her on a barge went by a friend. Three dives a day in a hard hat suit and twice I've had the bends. Thank God it's only 60 feet and the currents here are slow. For I'd never have the strength to go below. But we've patched her rents, stopped her bends, dog patch and put all down. Put cables to her for a dab and girded her around. Tomorrow noon we'll hit the air and then take up the strain and make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. Come on now! Rise again! Rise again, that her name not be lost to the knowledge of men. Those who loved her best and were with her till the end will make the Mary Ellen Carter rise again. Crumble in the scale. She'd saved our lives so many times, living through the gales. And the laughing drunken rats who left her to a sorry grave, they won't be laughing in another day. And you, to whom adversity has dealt the final blow, with smiling bastards lying to you everywhere you go, turn to and put out all your strength of arm and heart and brain, and like the Mary Ellen Carter, rise again. Rise again, rise again. Though your heart it be broken and life about to end, no matter what you've lost, be in a home of love a friend. Like the Mary Ellen Carter, rise again, rise again, rise again. Though your heart it be broken and life about to end, no matter what you've lost, be in a home of love a friend. Like the Mary Ellen Carter. Again. 
Jim Morrison. Garnet Rogers. Stan Rogers, thank you. Isn't that great?